Hey, where's Colonel Bethel? She's in the back, Chief. Thank you. Hey, Roy, let me meet you over here, okay? Yeah, I'll meet you in there. Hey, sir. Good to see you, Chief. What's going on with the intel? You don't want to get into that right now. But well, we got to talk about it. There's nothing there. These sites are empty. We got to be very careful. There's going to be a huge storm around here. What do you mean? They're blaming us for not moving fast enough. We have to stay on task. The intel's no good. Let's not make any waves, okay? They don't want to hear that back in Washington. Yeah. I had a couple questions about the intel uh, for tomorrow. Uh, are we sure this is accurate? It's solid. It's good to go. Uh, what's the source? Well, it's a uh, human source intel, uh, but it, it's, it's, it's solid, it's current, as of 0400. Was it the same, same source we've been using? On, uh, every site we've hit on the way up here, we rolled a donut. Chief, how about we do this? Let's talk offline, give me a list of the places where you went and the grids, and we'll make sure that you had the right information written down and that you went to the right places, okay? Captain, the issue isn't, isn't the grid, sir. It's, it's, the issue is that there's nothing there. Stand down, the Chief. Oh, we hey, need to Don, move Don, on whoa, here. Don, hold on, hold a second. Hey, welcome back to The Forge. Today, we're going to talk about something that I think is incredibly crucial to us as men and really to anybody in general. Any nation that goes to war must have good information on their enemies. Matter of fact, we call it intel. You have to have strong intel. And if you don't, you are going to lose not only battles, but you will ultimately lose the war. As men, we have to make sure that we are informed. We have to make sure that we have good intel. Today, we're gonna ask that question, what kind of intel are you getting in your life? Let's talk about it. My goal for this channel is not to hear myself talk as much as some may think that's the case. My goal for this channel and for The Forge is to help men. Um, the most important thing we have in life is information. How do I know what I'm hearing is true? Jesus said in the last days, beware, don't let anyone deceive you. So deception is everywhere, just like it was in the Garden of Eden when Satan tempted Eve and deceived her. Deception is everywhere. And so your intel is vital. And I think today, intel is the greatest point of deception in Western culture. And so today I want to introduce you to a friend of mine who is a wonderful pastor, awesome man, and he has a channel called Hope for Our Times, and he talks about Bible prophecy, but he talks about the deception that's going on in America. He's also written an amazing book, and I'm going to put the trailer on the end of this video. I hope you'll go and order it, and I hope maybe you'll uh, count the link below and maybe get it as well. I will put his link to his channel on the bottom as well in the description so you can find him. You won't be sorry. Please enjoy Tom Hughes. I'll see you next week on The Forge. Uh, this whole thing is a house of cards. Uh, think of this. Jesus warned that as the time of his return neared, men's hearts would fail them from the fear of the things that are coming on the earth. A cardiovascular disease is the world's leading cause of death, but even though anxiety and stress play a role in those deaths, heart problems today are more a symptom of high cholesterol diets than outright fear. The fear Jesus spoke of occurs during the time called the tribulation, and we're not there yet. In fact, before the tribulation begins, God will evacuate from the earth those who are in Christ. We call that event the rapture. If you expect to leave earth in the rapture, you may think this future mass heart failure has nothing to do with you, but it has a lot to do with you. And let me tell you, this whole thing we are watching, it is a house of cards, and it's about ready to rock the world. Okay, a quick look at the judgments of God during the tribulation gives us a clue about why fear would become so intense. There are the seal judgments, 
which begin the famous Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, the trumpet judgments and the bull judgments, these events will result in billions of human deaths and everyone on earth will be severely impacted by them. Here's the verse in context. These are the words of Jesus. They're found in Luke chapter 21. And there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from the fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then, check this out. This is important to put it in the right context. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So this seems to place the heart failures near the end of the seven years of tribulation. Now, this fits with what Jesus said in Luke chapter 17 about life following normal patterns right up to the end. But finally, anxieties that will have been building for decades will finally overwhelm people's emotions. Huge numbers of them will be literally scared to death. They will see signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, the seas will change. People and animals will die in extraordinary numbers. The distress of nations felt at that time in history will make World War II seem like a country square dance. And hearts will stop. Fear will stop them. This verse is not being fulfilled at this moment. Uh, people can't yet look in the sky and see Jesus coming toward earth in a cloud with power and great glory. However, like so many tribulation prophecies, we can see a world clearly headed in that direction. People are afraid. And uh, the general trend is toward greater and greater fear. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we witnessed the balagon of the Silicon Valley Bank. At first, it just looked like a local bank had been too aggressive in giving out risky loans. And then another bank failed. And the whole banking sector took a hit on Wall Street. Few things frighten a population like bank failures. A fear rose. And the government stepped in pretending to be the savior. Isn't that the way it is? There's the real savior, Jesus. But the government's stepping in. And we're going to see this eventually with Antichrist. Here I am to save everything. Listen, this whole thing is a house of cards. The time will come when there will be a massive economic collapse greater than the world has ever known. And I believe it's all planned. FDR said, in politics, nothing happens by accident. If it happens, you can bet it was planned that way. Uh, whether intentional or not, the economy is changing, and people know it. And anxiety keeps being ratcheted up. Importance of disaster are everywhere. Throughout its war with Ukraine, Russia has been threatening nuclear Europe and the United States with nuclear war. The old Soviet Union spoke relatively little about annihilating the West with its nukes. Instead, it talked about overtaking the West with what it believed was a more efficient and more fair economic system. Putin knows that he can't win that kind of war, so he uses nukes as a threat. Then there's China. It seems fully intent on using American technology to build for itself the greatest military the world has ever seen. Uh, listen, fear rises with possibilities of nuclear war, economic collapse, and supply chains shutting down. Uh, we know that across the planet, dread diseases are grown and enhanced in laboratories, and they are just waiting for accidental or even intentional release. Despite being outlawed, uh, the world has more chemical weapons than ever before. If you want some fearful reading material, just read details about the results of a chemical attack on a human body. And chemical weapons are cheap enough for poor nations or terror groups. Uh, let me tell you, the whole thing is about ready to collapse. All of it is, or, or just explode whichever way you want to put it. But we're all racing toward the tribulation. And then, get this, there are the manufactured fears. The fears that are made up in order to force people to change their way of life and to give up fundamental rights. Uh, fake fears fill the media. Listen, tribulation is the shape of things to come. And the world is changing into that shape before our eyes. For instance, Revelation chapter 6 speaks of hyperinflation, devastating people's lives. Today, 
we have inflation, but not tribulation level inflation. However, the primary cause of inflation and hyperinflation is already in full swing. Uncontrolled government spending and debt. The Bible gives us a good picture of how the world will look during the tribulation, and it's beginning to look that way. The horses are loaded in the gate, waiting for the bell. Tribulation era geopolitical alignments have not yet fully taken shape, but they are taking shape with breathtaking speed. And so it is with fear. Uh, These are not uh, the days when men's hearts are failing because of the sights in heaven. However, a dark, perspiration-soaked dread has already begun to saturate the world. Uh, Events of our day should logically turn everyone into Bible believers. What God said would happen is happening. Instead of fearing everything, people should have fearful reverence for God and his righteous power. Instead, uh, they tend to either ignore God or express anger toward him. Think on this. Uh, We see the same pattern during the tribulation. In, In Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 through 7, the Bible says where John writes, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel uh, to preach to those who dwell on earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory, for the hour of his judgment has come. But for the most part, people refuse. Uh, They will be given opportunity to repent even after the judgments begin, but they will choose instead to stick to their old habits of blaspheming the name of God. That habit, by the way, is already fully entrenched. Revelation chapter 16, verse 9 says, And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. Let's move on to think about this group also. Uh, Consider this. Terrorist groups use fear and intimidation to control and discourage their enemies. Governments also use fear for their own ends, including the fear of terrorism. And over the past few years, the war on terror in the United States has been refocused, get this, I'm sure you've experienced it, has been refocused and redefined as a battle against conservative Christians, pro-life groups, people who believe in two genders, marriage between a male and female, and then, of course, those moms at school board meetings being labeled as some of the worst people in the world, terrorists. And more and more, people are believing that Bible-believing Christians, the salt of the earth, are the danger to the world. I mean, have you thought about that before? You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Listen, the darkness doesn't like light. And right now, apparently, the salt is a little too much for this world. As the planet shifts into its tribulation-era alignments, This is only going to increase. Another fear afflicts many Christians, and it's this fear, though. It's the fear of end times, and maybe this is where you are. This is an unexpected but widespread fear. It primarily afflicts half-hearted and semi-committed Christians. Listen, let this be a wake-up call to you, if that's the case. The rejectors of Christ won't grasp what's really happening until the end. And when it hits them, their hearts will fail them. But followers of Christ know about it right now. We see the signs. We have heard the word. Uh, We know what's really happening and where the world is headed. Uh, These things thrill many of you who follow channels like this and enjoy Bible prophecy because it means that Jesus is coming again. And it looks like he's coming soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, But others suffer depression, in some cases severe depression. Today, millions of Christians don't want to know when another world event points to these being the end times. Uh, They don't want to hear about the coming of the Lord. Uh, They want to run and hide. Uh, They long for the bliss of ignorance. End time events threaten to interrupt their plans, and that scares them. Some want to have kids or grandkids or other plans they have for the future. But think of it in the right context. This world is changing. The people running this world don't want you to have any of those joys anyway. Uh, But what is coming for us in the Lord will give us joy beyond our comprehension. The fearful Christian needs to know 
that while the signs are shaping up, no one knows when the rapture will take place. It could be today or it could be some time from now. But the day is coming when believers in Christ will be called home, and it will be awesome. Consider this. The rapture is imminent. That means it could happen at any time. And we may uh, not fill all of our dreams. However, in Christ, this is what's going on. We are giving up dirt for diamonds. Don't ever forget that. The key to dealing with fearful thoughts are found in our trusting God. He loves you. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, God demonstrates his own love toward us in this, that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. He loves you that much, and he is in charge of everything. You will either be raptured or you're going to die. But either way, he will be with you. Have faith in God. God bless you. I have a book that is coming out. Uh, check out this short trailer on it. I'm excited about it. It's called Marking the Masses, and uh, I, I think you'll like it. Check out the trailer. I had a conversation with my dad. He used to work for a company called Teledyne back in the early 1960s. And he was invited to a party in the Hollywood Hills. He said all the big wigs were there, Henry Singleton and so forth. And he said an individual showed up and they're standing in the backyard looking into the city of Los Angeles. You see all these, uh, all these lights in the city out there and all the people that are out there. Someday, we're gonna be able to control everyone. And he wasn't referring to just Los Angeles. Everybody is gonna be identified. It's called the mark of the beast. Choosing the mark is really choosing to either live or die. There's no escape from the system. Available in paperback and ebook. Get your copy today at markingthemasses.com and watch the full interview with author Tom Hughes only on Harpazo.